weird. It was because of the way the notebook was last year. We fixed the notebook, and I didn't fix the PowerPoint. So, all right. So, um, we need to look at. So we tried to talk about coterminal angles a lot yesterday, and you had to do one positive and one negative. So remember to get a coterminal. We need to add two pi as one revolution, or subtract two pi as one revolution. So, um, in order, to, we, so let's add two pi to that and see if we can get it positive. All right. Um, so if I add 2 pi to it, I need to make a common denominator. What would my common denominator be? 3, so what would I really, instead of 2, what would I write? 6 pi over 3, so what's 5 pi over, negative 5 pi over 3 and 6 pi over 3. So pi over 3 would be a positive coterminal angle. I need to get a negative coterminal angle, so I should probably subtract it too, right? Um, instead of subtracting 2 pi, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 pi over 3 because it's already in the common denominator. What do we end up with? Negative 11 pi over 3. Good. All right, let's talk about complement and supplement. So you should hopefully already have it written down what the complement and the supplement are. Okay. Last year, probably in about the fourth or fifth grade, you hopefully learned those words for the first time. Okay. So complement means the two angles who add up to 90. But we now have a new measure, not just radi not just degrees, we also know how to do, we're also learning how to do radians, okay? So pi over 2 is 90 degrees in radian, all right? So they either add to 90 or add to pi over 2. Supplementary means they have to add up to 180, or in radian measure, we're going to add to pi, okay? Um, and the key to doing this is they have to be positive angles. We don't do negative angles with, with complementary and supplementary, okay? Even though we know negative angles exist, right? Because it's a, But it's a directional thing. It isn't a measure of an angle. All right, so we're going to find the complement and the supplement of each one of those angles. Um, so I am going to, uh, we have to subtract from pi over 2, right, to get the complement. So my complement is pi over 2 minus whatever the angle measure is. So I need a common denominator. What would my common denominator be? 10, good. Um, I'd have to multiply this one by 5, so I get 5 pi over 2. What do I need to multiply this one by? 2, so 2 pi over 2, 2 times 2 pi is... 4 pi, so what's my complementary angle? Pi over 10 would be my complementary angle. My supplementary angle, what am I supposed to subtract from? Pi, good. Um, and I'm subtracting the 2 pi over 5. I'm going to not rewrite that. Can't I just write 5 over 5? All right, so 5, fi 5 pi over 5 minus 2 pi over 5 is what? 3 pi over 5 would be the supplementary angle. Okay. Okay. Um, so 4 pi over 5, the complementary angle, I'm going to do, what, what do I subtract from for my complementary angle? Pi over 2, and I'm going to subtract the 4 pi over 5, right? What's my common denominator again? 10. So I need to multiply this one by 5. So I get 5 pi over 10. And I need to multiply this one by... Okay, so here there's a problem with this, right? Don't we get a negative angle? Really what we should be doing, and I should have said was, let's put absolute values around it. Okay? So if you get a negative... Because subtraction, it doesn't matter which way we do it. We can always just do the absolute value of it, and that'll get, it'll get us the positive angle. All right, so we end up with negative 3 pi over 10, which absolute value of it would be 3 pi over 10. So it only should come out to be a positive answer on this. All right, supplement. What am I going to subtract from for a supplementary angle? Pi. So pi minus 4 pi over 5 means I should, and what should I make this instead of 4 pi or instead of uh, pi? 5 pi over 5, so what are we going to get when we subtract? Pi over 5. So we didn't have the absolute value issue on that one, right? So only when the first angle ends up being a little bit bigger, then, then we've got an absolute value issue. Okay? All right, we good with example 4? All right, example, oh, degree. 
So degree, gradient is one way to measure it, right? You already know about degrees. One degree, though, represents 1 360th of a circle, OK? So one little sliver of a circle. And hopefully you already had that written in, right? OK. So we need to determine which quadrant each angle lies in, OK? And I did it talk about quadrants the other day. Yeah, so we know quadrant 1, 2, one, two 3, and 4, OK? Um, and we know that this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and that's 360, right, in degrees. So if I thought about that to determine the quadrant, which quadrant is 274 going to land in? It's going to land in quadrant 4, right? Is there a lot of work that I'm going to be showing with that? No, OK? We just need to... And it's important. This seems like really simple stuff, but it's really important that you understand this for us getting into what we're going to get into next, OK? That's why they're kind of doing these intro lessons here. All right, 153 is going to land in which quadrant? Two. Good. All right, now we've got to sketch angles in standard position, huh? So sketching the angle in standard position, again, I'm going to look at, I'm going to go on to my quadrants here. I know that this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees. So which quadrant is 120 going to lie in? It's going to lie in two. So I would grab, draw here, and then I draw this little arc, right? And if I label it 120, then I know at least what you're talking about. It doesn't have to be perfectly in between. OK. All right, let's think about B. B says negative 220, and hopefully what you learned yesterday is the negative is a directional thing. It means instead of going counterclockwise, it means we go clockwise first. So if I thought about it, instead of saying that this is 270, that's also like saying negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 360, right? If I go backwards around the, around the, um, the quadrants. So where would negative 220 land? Which quadrant? It would land in 2 as well. Probably, let's see, closer to the 270 than the 180, right? So almost the same as the 120. But we're going to say, and then label it negative 220 degrees. What will happen on the test is you're going to pick from something multiple choice. It won't be labeled, but you'll have to figure out where it lands. OK? All right, the next one here. Um, we're going to determine two coterminal angles in degree measure, one positive and one negative for each angle. So instead of adding 2 pi, what is how, how many degrees one, is once around the circle? 360. So we're going to add and subtract 360. Okay, so Or at least that's where we're going to start. We might want to subtract first, depending upon where we're at in the circle. So I'm going to add 360 to this one. What's 45 plus 360? How much? 405 degrees would be my positive. Uh, to get a negative, I probably need to subtract 360. So when I subtract 360, what do we get? Negative 315 degrees. OK. All right. Um, I'm, in this one here, it's already a big positive number, right? And I can see that it's bigger than 360. So I'm going to try subtracting, because I want to do the least amount of work possible. So if I subtract 360, what do we get? 60. So I got a positive coterminal angle. If I want to get a negative coterminal angle, I'm going to take that 60 and subtract 360. And what do we end up with? Negative 300 will get us the negative coterminal angle. All right. This one is already negative. I need to get a negative one and a positive one. I'm going to start by adding. So I'm going to add 360. So what is 135 plus 360? 225. And then that got me, got me a positive. So, and if I keep adding, I know I'm going to go positive. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 360. And what do we end up with? Add it up. There we go. All right. OK. And then the last one here that we were supposed to have done yesterday, OK, which should now make the homework make a lot more sense. 
All right, complement and supplement again. For complement, how many degrees? 90, and for supplement, how many degrees? 180. So for my complement, I'm going to do 90 minus 85, which is going to get me what? 5 degrees. And again, make sure it's always positive, okay? For my supplement, I would do 180 minus 85, and I end up with what? 95 degrees, okay? That's where you should have ended yesterday. Now we're going to go ahead and look at today's stuff, which today's stuff takes us all of about 10 or 15 minutes at the most to learn, okay? So we're going to learn today's part was all about conversion, okay? How to convert things. And I think you guys had this written in there already, right? No? Okay, so write those two things in. Write that one and that one in if you don't have it. All right, so um, there are more ways to measure. So if we're going to go to a decimal point, okay, and this comes up, you know lo how longitude and latitude are measured on the Earth? They, they measure it in degrees, minutes, and seconds, okay? Um, so we can have, there is a decimal point version of that, but we also have to be able to convert back. The reason I'm showing it to you, because normally I wouldn't, is once in a while throughout this chapter they'll make an angle measure like this and you don't want you want to be able to in case I accidentally have assigned it you want to be able to do the problem so you just use your degrees minutes seconds to convert to degrees or to decimal okay or vice versa all right at least you'll know how to put it in okay so a minute is 1 60th of one degree okay and a second is one three thousand over one, one over three thousand six hundred of a degree. Okay, um, use one little mark, one little apostrophe mark for a, a minute, and you use a double quote for a second. Okay, we're gonna put this in. This is the old calculator. Okay, what I did do is you can. So somebody asked how we can do this at home. There is a way to do this on the scientific calculator. I put a video up. Okay, and I use the TI example. If you don't have a TI scientific, f search YouTube and figure out how to put it into a scientific. Okay, um, I did not do very good at finding there, the one on the on the computer calculator did not go well. I also just put a degrees minute second converter up too, but it did longitude and latitude because that's the application. All right, let's look at putting this in. Okay. So first thing you got to do is let's check to make sure that we are in degrees. All right. Not that I think it has to be, but let's double check our calculator. So there's two ways to do it. You can go to the home button and go to settings. You can also just check your scratch pad. So if you look at this little, if you go to the, grab that little triangle on your scratch pad and you go to settings and status, hit document settings and make sure your angle measure is degree and hit make default. And then it'll and then click OK. OK, so make sure it's in degrees. I don't think it matters for this, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. All right, there are two ways to get degrees, minutes and seconds. OK, one of them is you can start typing your number. And then if you come over here to this button where the pi is, do you see the degree symbol? Do you see the minute symbol? To get seconds, you can just use two minutes. Okay, you use that twice. But I think that's the longer and harder way to do it because you have to keep using that button. Okay? So the other way to do it is you grab the, the, grab the book. And it's probably already going to be kind of where you need it to be if you scroll this up to the top and you choose angle. And then if you scroll down a bit, hit degrees, minutes, seconds. So you hit the button, the book button, and then hit the number two, find angle, and scroll down to degrees, minutes, seconds. And do you see how it came up? See how the, the, the degrees is dark, but the other two are grayed? So you don't necessarily have to have them, or you can skip over one of them and not have to have it, and that still works, okay? So for the degrees, we said 64, so I'm just going to type it in the way it looks. 
And then I'm going to do 32 minutes and 47 seconds. And hit enter. Oh, didn't get a decimal. How do I get a decimal? Control enter. So if it comes up as a fraction, hit control enter. And then at least three decimal places, right? Everybody got it? Make sure you write it down. Again, I'm not going to be able to show a lot of work because it is on the calculator. Give you a few more seconds. C control enter to get it into decimal. All right, there's a second one there, right? Everybody try to get that one in on your own. So hit your book button and then type in your degrees, minutes, seconds, and probably hit a control enter. Don't shout out the answer yet. Give everybody a chance to do it. You will have to be able to do this on the next test. So make sure you know what you're doing because I can't help you when it comes time for the test. All right, thank you. All right, we got it? Okay, let's take a, what did what'd you guys get? 25.229? All right, awesome. So this one we know is 25.229. It should always have that degree, should always be out in that decimal point, okay? It's just the back part of the decimal that we're really getting off of this, okay? All right, the next one I believe goes the other way. So now I have to go from decimal point two degrees, minutes, seconds, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is type in your decimal point. So type in the 46.126. So 46.126. Am I doing the right one? 45. 45, not 46. Apparently I didn't type anything anyways, so it didn't really matter. 45, I'm not in here, that's why. 45.126. All right, now what you're going to hit is you're going to go to your book button again. In that same area, you're going to scroll down a little bit more and hit, see where it says convert to DMS? That means DMS means degrees, minutes, seconds. And hit enter. And then see how it says the little triangle and DMS? Hit enter on for that. And there it is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And you write it down. There you go. All right, there's a second one there, right? Everybody practice the second one on your own. So everybody try 12 right now. Make sure you write it down. Don't call out the answer yet. All right, it should have been negative 157 degrees. What was your minutes? 20 and your seconds? 42? Okay. Can we handle that? That's not too difficult? All right, did you, had you written down these formulas? You should have, I think. I think I thought those ones were part of it. All right, so write those down really quick if you didn't write them down. Okay, so there's two things that we're gonna, we want to be able to convert to and from. So we want to be able to go from degrees to radians and from radians to degrees. If we're going to go from degrees to radians, we're trying to introduce a pi. 
okay, into the into the rate into the measure. So when we try to introduce a pi, the pi goes on the top, okay. If we're trying to go from radians to degrees, we're trying to get rid of a pi, so we're going to put the pi on the bottom, okay, because that'll make it cancel. All right, so the first few go radian, or we want to go from degrees to radians, so I'm going to multiply by pi over 180 because I'm trying to introduce a pi. All right, it says don't use calculator, but with basically what they mean is they want an exact answer, not a decimal point answer. I could use my calculator to help me do some of this reduction. What goes into both 35 and 180? Five for sure. Okay, so let's put five in. Five goes into 135 how many times? You can use your calculator for that part. That's okay. 27. And into 180 how many times? 36. That's probably not all the way yet though, right? 27 over 36. What else goes in there? Nine goes into here three times and into 36. Four times, so three pi over four. Maybe. All right, let's try another one. Let me see if I can get the pen to come back here. Turn this off. Okay, there we go. All right, 540. So I want to introduce a pi. What do I have to multiply by if I'm going to introduce a pi? Pi over 180. Good. We like it when there's tens because don't these zeros just cross out? Yeah, it's nice. All right, what goes into both 54 and 18? Six goes in. 18 also goes in, but let's go six because that's what most people are seeing. So we'd see a six and a two, right? Is three? Yeah. Yes, it is. Sorry. I'm looking at my notes. I wrote it down wrong. All right. Three goes into six how many times? Twice. Twice. Something's wrong. We put a nine into there. We were supposed to put nine into 18, not three into 18. That's what's wrong. It was supposed to be two. All right. So if we put nine into 54, we get it six times, right? Nine into 18 <coughs> twice. Six goes in, or two goes into six three times, so it should be three pi. Yeah. Yep, take the pass. All right, everybody try 15 on your own. So take about 30 seconds, try 15, multiply by the pi over 180, get it reduced. All right, let's check it out. So my zeros would go, right? What goes into both eight or 18 and 27? Nine into eight into 27 and into 18, two. So negative three pi over two. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go the other way. We've got pies, we wanna get rid of the pies. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by what this time? 180 over pi, and the idea is to cancel the pies, right? So the pies are gonna go how many times does 2 go into 180? 90, so negative 90 degrees. Make sure you label it with the degrees. Okay. This one here, I think there's just a typo after it. It should probably have a pi after it. Let's put it in. All right, so I should multiply by what? 180 over pi. What's going to happen? Pi's cancel, so we get what? 360 degrees. All right, go ahead and everybody try 18. All right, what'd you multiply by? Okay, so what go? What happens? Pies cancel. What else? Two into one eighty, and you multiplied. What'd you get? 
810 degrees. All right, if you thought that was easy, this is even better. Um, they want you to go three decimal places, which means you are using the calculator. So if I'm going to go two degree or two radians, I have to multiply by what? Pi over 180. Put it in your calculator. That's really what they want you to do. So we're going to go, it was 122, right? So 122 times, I'm going to hit a control divide. Always use the pi button, don't use 3.14, okay? Over 180. And hit enter. So that's the decimal they're looking for. And you probably want to label it with the word, or at least RAD for radians. I got way more decimals than you guys probably did. Right? You could stop it at 1.29, right? All right. The other one wants you to go to degrees, right? So what are we going to multiply by? 180 over pi. Well, your pi's cross out because you're not going to type more into your calculator than you have to, right? What do you get when you multiply? 630 degrees. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. You should now be able to go back to last night's homework and finish it, right? So it should be a pretty piece of cake to finish now. I shouldn't be getting questions about complementary and supplementary tomorrow, right? Because that's pretty easy. Um, and then you could then tonight's homework shouldn't be that much more. All right. So you've got those two to deal with. Um, tomorrow we're going to be doing a, a, a fairly short performance task in class. Like I said, there's a lot of exploratory stuff that we have to do. And then there's going to be a worksheet that reviews, I think, angle of elevation and depression with it. OK. All right. I'm going to come around in about a minute or so to stamp. You guys can grab books and get started and get this over and done with. And if you didn't vote for Costin, vote for Costin, right?